Oh boy. Hello everybody, Silver Picker here, and today's video is one that I am super excited for because it brings two of my biggest passions together, coin collecting and history. So if you are a budding numismatist or a history buff or just somebody that's into history but loves learning about it through a physical medium like coins, well, you've come to the right place. Now, specifically today, we are going to be talking about my collection of coins from the British Mandate of Palestine. Now, it is a super, super interesting series of coins because it is from a super, super interesting period of history. We're gonna be talking about how I'm going to be upgrading this collection during this video, but I wanna start with just a little history lesson about the British Mandate of Palestine. Now, don't worry, this is not gonna be like school because in school, you can't fast forward through the boring stuff. So if you're not interested in learning about the history, well, then you're probably in the wrong place, but you can always just fast forward to the coins. But let's start with the history of the British Mandate of Palestine. As I'm sure you can tell by the title of this video, our story takes place in the Middle East. Now, before the end of World War I, much of the Middle East was ruled by the Ottoman Empire. When the Ottoman Empire collapsed after World War I, the victors had to figure out how they were going to govern these former Ottoman territories. So the British and the French ended up dividing up responsibilities in this region under what was called the Sykes-Picot Agreement. Now, in addition to that, the British also received a mandate from the League of Nations, which is essentially the precursor to the modern United Nations, to rule over what ended up becoming mandatory Palestine. So they had a mandate to rule over what is today Israel, Jordan, the West Bank, and Gaza. Now, this mandate was intended to be temporary until the region could stabilize and have some sort of self-rule. Now, to make things even more complicated, in 1917, under the Balfour Declaration, the British promised the Jewish people who were living in the region a homeland within their ancestral birthplace. Now, this, of course, caused a lot of strife between the Jews and the Arabs who were living there, and that strife, of course, lasts until today. Finally, in May of 1948, the British rule ended when the mandate expired and the Jewish people living there declared independence for the state of Israel. <laughs> Then the following day, the Arab nations and the surrounding countries attacked the newly formed state of Israel in what ended up becoming the Israel War of Independence, and that precipitated future events, future wars, and eventually the situation that we're all in today, and that is a story for another time. Now, I'm sure there's going to be a very lively chat in the comments section. I just ask that you all be respectful of one another. I know that's a big ask for this topic and a big ask for the YouTube comment section, but I have no problem with you sharing all of your opinions, but please keep it respectful. Now, let's get on to my coins and how I'm going to be upgrading this collection. All right, so here we have my album for my coin collection from the British Mandate of Palestine. Now you can see here on the cover, it says 1927 to 1947. Those were the years the coins were produced, although in 1947, the coins were never actually issued into circulation. Most were said to be destroyed, although a few examples exist, they are exceedingly rare. Now, when we open up the album, the first thing we see are the one mil coins. Now, you may sort of take it for granted that it's just another name for a denomination, right? One mils, two mils, five mils, goes to 10 to 20 mils, 50 mils, 100 mils. Well, this is already fascinating because unlike most coinage that's been decimalized, it's not decimalized to the hundreds, right? So in US currency, for example, it's 100 cents to a dollar. But in this case, it was 1,000 mils to the Palestinian pound. Now the Palestinian pound was pegged to the British pound in value, so it was essentially the British pound divided up into thousands. That is super fascinating. So this coin right here, which is the 100 mils coin, you might think of as like the dollar size coin, but actually this was really more like the dime because it's 100 out of 1,000 instead of 100 out of 100. Super, super cool. Now, I actually want to show you a, a kind of a little tour of the coins themselves, but the real bulk of this video is actually going to be about the album itself. Now, this album is quite frustrating because it is a total piece of junk. Now, you might not have noticed that from uh, just my little flipping through, but you can see that it's actually falling apart. The pages are delaminating, there's some damage over here, and I bought this new, and all I do is keep it on a shelf, so the fact that it's like 
warping and all that is really just to show that this is a not good quality album. I mean, it's made by uh, www.arabiancoins.com, whatever that is. Uh, I do like that it has the mintages over here. It is really, really helpful and handy. And I do like the album style. It is like a Dansko style. Now, if you don't know what Dansko albums are, they are like the creme de la creme of coin albums. It's kind of a defunct company, which is frustrating because they made like the best albums. You can see here, this is an example of a Dansko album that has my US typeset. This is such a popular album that these albums, not including the coins, these albums made by Dansko are actually selling for like 150 bucks each on eBay just because of their quality. You can see here it says World Coin Library Dansko. And these coins have not, these albums have not been produced in a long time, but they really are like the gold standard of coin albums. So I've always wanted one for my British Mandate of Palestine coin collection, but the Dansko albums were made in such limited quantities that they're almost impossible to find. From what I understand, they only actually produced 500 albums total. It was like a special order, they did a special run, they printed it only one time, and that was it. So I've been looking for years on eBay to find one, and I couldn't, and that's why I bought this sort of like junky album, uh, just sort of as like a stopgap measure. But guess what, guys? I found one! Yes, I did indeed. This brand new, still shrink-wrapped in its package, it is the limited edition Palestine British Mandate Coins 1927 to 1946. You can see here they did a little bit of a difference because no one's going to be getting the uh, 1927 coins, and if they do, they're going to get them graded. They're not going to be putting them in these albums. So that's the little bit of a difference. But you can see here it is green. It's a beautiful color. It's in excellent, perfect shape, and you can see 100% made in America. Man, I am so proud to have gotten this. Now, I spent $92 on this album. That is insane. This probably retailed for like 20 or 25 bucks when it was made, and it is now worth four times as much. I'm not sure that the coins themselves have, has appreciated that much in value. So for the rest of this video, basically what I want to do is I want to crack open this album and I want to transfer the coins here and we can just have like a little discussion about coin collecting, about these coins in particular, and uh, just sort of see where we go. Now if you're enjoying this video and you like videos like that and you want to support uh, my mission of teaching people all over the world about coin collecting, precious metals investing, and even personal finance, I would love it if you would consider hitting that big old red subscribe button and the little bell next to it so you never miss a beat. And if you really want to help out, you can give this video a big old like as well. I would definitely appreciate it. All right, you guys don't even understand how happy I am about this. I am so excited. So here we go. I've cracked the pack. I've cracked through. We are going on to the other side. There is no turning back right now. I have just unboxed this. This thing has not been open in decades. This thing has not touched human hands since it came off the press like literally 25 years ago. Oh boy, oh look at that. This is my first actually brand new uh, coin album from Dansko. This is really cool, it comes with a little uh, catalog. Man, I wish I could actually order these still because I would order a bunch of them. Um, and it's got a little bit of a history page. If you wanna read that, you can pause the video here and check that out. And look at that. Oh, look at these pristine pages. Oh, this is gorgeous. I am so, so happy. And of course it does have, oh, it has another one of these, but it also has the mintages and it's even put together more nicely than the other one. Man, I am so excited. Oh, and it even tells you which ones are bronze, cupro nickel or silver or a key date. Ooh, this is awesome. This is awesome. All right, let's start transferring these coins over. All right, so I have thoroughly washed hands. My hands are ready to go, clean, so that I can get this uh, party started. So I'm gonna slide out this little window over here to get ready to receive the coins from the other album. In the meantime, I'm gonna pop those ones out and we'll take a look at them. All right, we have our very first coin. First coin is a 1935 one mil. I am missing the 1927, the first year of issue for the one mil, but they all basically look the same in this series. And you can see it's really simple, but really elegant. You can see it in Arabic, English, and Hebrew. It says Palestine, and then it has the date in both uh, Western and Arabic style numerals. Yes, I'm aware that the Western style numerals are called Arabic numerals, but that's a story for a different day. Now, on the other side, I also love the design. It has the denomination written out, one mil. It has it in English, Hebrew, and Arabic. It has it in the numbers as well. And of course, it has that beautiful olive branch right in the middle. 
These ones are bronze, uh, and we will get to other metals later, but all of the one mil denomination are bronze. So we're gonna put this in right over here into the 1935 spot, and I'm going to be pushing it in actually with a gloved hand. So these are cotton gloves. If you're interested in getting these uh, to protect your coins, uh, I'll have a link below. But basically, I handle the coins without these because it's actually a little bit easier for me to maneuver and I'm actually safer without the gloves. But when I am gonna be pressing on it, I don't wanna be pressing a fingerprint directly into it. So there we go. That is our first coin put into the album. So now I'm going to put the rest of the one mils in and then I'll show you the two mils. Right, and there we have it. We have the last of my one mil coins. I'm only missing the 1941 and the 1927. And man, doesn't that look good? Oh yeah, I love that. This is such a nice album. Now you can see here we have the two mil coin, which you can see is basically identical to the one mil coin, but of course it is double the size. This one is from 1927. It is the first year of issue and it is the same design, but of course here it says two mils. Now, unfortunately, this is the only example of a two mil coin I have. It is a very lonely coin right here because the rest of the four in the series, the other four in the series, I do not yet have. So I'm hoping that I will be able to trade for it or, uh, or end up acquiring it in some other way. I really do like to trade for these uh, as opposed to just buying them outright. It's just sort of uh, how I've been doing it so far. And uh, it makes me happy to sort of be able to get these coins out in the wild as opposed to just sort of buying my way into owning them. So this is what the first page looks like so far. Everything bronze and we are missing two from the one mil and four from the two mil. Now the five mils is where things start to get really interesting. And that's partially because the coins look different. You can see here that the coins actually have a hole in the center. Now I believe the reason for that is because cupro nickel was more expensive than bronze. In order to make the coins not teeny tiny, they put a hole in it so they could use less metal. Please confirm that in the uh, comment section if somebody knows that for sure. This one's in pretty roughed up shape. This is the 1927 uh, five mil coin. And you can see here, this one also has sort of this wreath of leaves. I'm not sure if it's olive leaves or not. Um, it might actually be like a wheat stalk uh, or something like that, but you can see it says Palestine in Hebrew, English, and Arabic again. It has the year, and on the reverse, it is again a similar design as the rest. Very simple, very functional, but very elegant. So I'm going to be putting these guys in, of course. And they all basically look the same when you go through the years, except for the one in 1942. And we'll get to that in a second. I'm sort of just lining these up to start and then I will push them down once I have uh, the glove on. But I wanna show you 1942 first. This is the five mil from 1942. And you can see it is a totally different color and that's because this one is made of bronze just like the one and two mil coins. And that's because cupro nickel was expensive and needed for the war effort during World War II, so these reverted back to, cupro, back to bronze as opposed to cupro nickel. So that is really cool. And I just love when they changed metals uh, due to historical events. I mean, it's very similar to the steel scent in the United States and also aluminum coins uh, throughout Europe in World War II. So really, really cool. That's one of the great things about coin collecting. You really can get a sense for history just by looking at the physical artifacts that were left behind. And in this case, we're talking about coins. And we just slide this window right over the coins and now they can be viewed and protected really, really nicely. Look at that. And this is the first page of my album. Looks so much better, so much neater than the other one, even though it's basically the same layout. Really, really cool. Moving on to the next medium-sized denominations. All right, so now moving on to the 10 mil coins. I'm gonna go through these ones a little bit faster because they are basically the same as the five mil, just again, twice the size. So this is the 1927. Again, this is the first year of issue, and it's just basically a bigger version of the five mil coin. Really, really cool though. I'm very happy with it. 
and I have a whole bunch of these. I have the 1927, I have the 1933, I have the 1939, the 1940 that I have is in excellent shape. This might be like one of the best shape coins I have in this entire set. Really, really nice. Still got a lot of that mint luster on it. And then the two most interesting in this set are the 1942s. Both of these are 1942, but they are made of different metals. This was a transitional year. So this was cupro nickel and this one was bronze, again, because of World War II. But how cool is that? This is like the 1982 US pennies that went from, uh, from copper to zinc, but this one is so much more visible. How cool is that? So we've got one space for cupro nickel and one space for bronze. Ah, it's so satisfying pressing these guys in. It's really, if you guys are a collector of anything, whether you're a coin collector or whether you collect anything else, there's nothing that beats organizing your collection in a beautiful new way to display it. I mean, this feels just so freaking good. If you want, while I'm doing this, in the comments below, put in sort of just one of those other like feel good moments you've had as a coin collector or a collector of anything. Like when you're organizing your collection, what is that moment that just makes you go, ah, this is great. As you can see, this is the 20 mil coin and it is basically just a bigger version of the five and 10 mil. So not too much to say about this. This is the 1935 one. Obviously it's a little bit easier to see the details on this coin because it's bigger. So take a gander. So I've got the 1935. We'll put that right in over here. And I also have the 1941, uh, which is in pretty rough shape, but hey, you know, I got all these from the wild. I got these from buying at garage sales, from buying collections, and I'm pretty darn proud of this. You know, I didn't, I didn't buy these off eBay. I got these the old fashioned way, you know, the, the old school collector way where you actually had to, uh, you know, sort of use your luck and your wits in combination and uh, get these amazing prizes uh, when you do find them. So pretty happy about that. And check it, check it. Now we have our second page done. On the second page, I'm missing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 out of 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 coins. I'm missing 11 out of 19 coins. It is a little bit bare looking, but it is still cool. Now, for those of you who have watched my previous videos on this, you'll see that I did not make a ton of progress. I know that. But again, I'm trying to do this the old fashioned way through trades, through uh, collection purchases, etc., as opposed to just sort of buying them online. All right, here we go, 50 mils. We've made it to the promised land. And uh, I guess pun intended, but what I mean by that is we are now at the silver section. That's right, the 50 and 100 mils were minted in silver. And although they look very similar in design to the other denominations, they just look great in silver. This is the 1927 50 mil piece. You can see again, it's got the olive branch with the English, Hebrew, and Arabic uh, lettering. Same as on the other side, and it has 50. And this one is in 72% silver. So this is the 1927. Let's get that in there right over here. And then we have one more that's in even better shape. Look at that, 1935. This one's definitely in like uh, AU condition. I mean, look at that, at least on the other side. This side is uh, still in very good condition but it is uh, probably not about uncirculated. But look at that, look. So this is the 1935 version and it is in spectacular condition. I don't know if I would say that it's like AU, but it is really close if not. Look at that, it's still got some mint luster on that side, a little bit on this side as well. Really, really nice. This is like one of the nicest coins in the collection. And now moving on, to the 100 mils, the creme de la creme, the top dog. Here we go. Let's open up this window and get ready to insert these beautiful coins. So here we go, starting us off. I do only have two. Uh, this is the 1927 and you can see it has like the full olive branch, right? You can see it's like the full stock as opposed to like the cut off one on the, uh, the 50 mil. I'll show you that again in a second but it is really, really nice. And these ones, 100 mils, these ones have the highest premium. These ones are really sought after by collectors. Look how cool that is. So put that one in its place, but here we go. This, 
is my most prized coin in the whole set. 1931, this 100 mil coin from 1931 is said to be the key date of the entire series. This coin I got at a garage sale. I paid like 25 bucks for it and like a whole bin full of other coins. So I paid almost nothing for this. This guy goes for like $300 plus in this condition. That is definitely one of my home run finds. And I'm so proud to have it in my collection. And I'm glad that I was able to save it from that, that toolbox. I bought it, in, it was in a toolbox full of other coins, clanging around with everything else, bought it at a garage sale, and now it is going to be preserved for posterity in my beautiful Dansko album. So there you have it. This is my Palestine British Mandate coins, the limited edition Dansko. We have now fully transferred my album over. All the coins are transferred. Look at that, from one mils to two mils to five mils, 10 mils, 20 mils, all the way up to the beautiful 50 and 100 mils and we've got all of our details here on the back page. Man, this is really perfect. I am so stoked about this. Now you see, I am still missing a whole bunch of coins, so I'm still on a journey, but that is what is special about coin collecting. This is a marathon, not a sprint. It is a lifelong hobby. I am not in any rush, but I am going to try and fill these through trades, through grab bags, through all sorts of other means, and little by little, I'm confident that I will eventually get the whole set. Now, if you guys are interested in collecting uh, coins and you're sort of not sure where to start, maybe picking a country that has a very, sh or you know, not necessarily a country, but you know, a uh, region or a time period where there's not a whole lot of coins that were produced, meaning all the coins ever produced by the British Mandate of Palestine fit in this one album. So it's a really, really compact way to start collecting coins where you have a limited series, you don't get overwhelmed, and you know exactly what you're trying to get. So I am super, super happy about this. Please let me know what you guys think in the comments below, whether you like this collection, whether you would be interested in collecting something like this, and uh, what you think of these Dansko albums. So it's a short, simple video for this week, but I hope you enjoyed it. I've got a lot more awesome stuff about coin collecting, precious metals investing, personal finance, and I've been doing a series all about alternative investments as well. So if you don't want to miss a beat, you got to hit that big old red subscribe button. Check me out on Instagram too. I post a lot of stuff there. TikTok. I'm all over the place. Silver Picker is worldwide. So I hope you enjoyed the show. I've got a lot more awesome stuff coming down the pike. So stay tuned. And until then, Silver Picker out. A huge, huge thank you to all of my wonderful patrons. If you guys watching right now are not yet a patron, but you want to be part of my personal private Discord server where we talk about coin collecting, precious metals investing, and really just goof off and have a great time, it is the best coins and precious metals private community on the internet. So if you want to get access to that Discord, please consider supporting my Patreon campaign. The links are below. Can't wait to see you there.